What are the different times listed in Daniel 12? What are the different times listed in Daniel 12? So to start, guess where we're going to turn? We're going to go to Daniel 12. Here's a good rule of thumb. Whenever you get a question about Daniel 12, one of the first places you want to start to look to just think through the issue is in Daniel 12. So Daniel 12, verse 11, And from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Verse 12, Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So the thing to notice is that there are different time periods within Daniel 12, right? One of them says 1,290 days. The other says 1,305 and 30 days. So what are the different time periods referring to? Well, by way of introduction, I want to understand the timing of some things that take place in the 70th week. So turn with me to Revelation 11. We're going to start here. Revelation chapter 11. Get Revelation 11. And actually go to Revelation 13 first. Revelation 13. Revelation 13, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now, what's described here is I, this is the, a description of the authority that is given during the 70th week. And the authority that's given is to continue for 40 and two months to speak great things and blasphemies. Now notice with me Revelation 11, verse 2. Revelation 11, verse 2. So we see the, the 40 and two months mentioned in Revelation 13, but I want you to notice something with me about Revelation 11, verse 2. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So we see that forty and two months time period again. In Revelation 13, it's about the speaking of great things and blasphemies. In Revelation 11, it's about the holy city being tread underfoot by the Gentiles for how long? Forty and two months. Now, keep Revelation 11 verse 2. But look with me at Luke 21, Luke chapter 21. Some fascinating things to see in Luke 21. Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. And notice with me verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Well, that's what Revelation 11 was talking about. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Well, how long does the times of the Gentiles last? You were just told in Revelation 11, verse 2. So notice Revelation 11, 2. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot. How long? Forty and two months. Now we're going to continue on here, but just for a moment, just think about forty and two months. Roughly how long is that? Well, there's twelve months in a year. So if we take forty-two and we divide by twelve, what do we come up with? Well, three and a half years, right? Three, uh, you know, 42 months is roughly three and a half years. Now get with me Daniel chapter 12. Get Daniel 12 and uh, get Daniel 12 and then, um, well, let's go to Daniel 12 first. Daniel chapter 12. 
And this is a, we're going to look at a couple different cross references here that are sort of interesting. Daniel chapter 12, and look with me at verse 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now you see there it says a time, times, and a half. So just keep that in memory for a minute. Go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great things against the Most High. Doesn't that remind you of what we read in Revelation 13 about the speaking of blasphemies and and great words? Daniel 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Reads very similar, not identical, but very similarly to what we just read in Daniel 12. Now get with me Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. What what, what are we doing here exactly? Well, here's what we're doing. What 1 Corinthians 2 tells you is that you are to compare spiritual things with spiritual. Isaiah 28 tells you, Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. The way that God teaches doctrine is that you find different verses that are related often in different places of the Bible, and you lay those verses side by side, and those verses collectively will explain things to you. So now notice with me Revelation 12, verse 14. It's a way for God to make his word clear, but only to the student. If you don't spend the time to study these things, you'll never be able to make these connections. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14 And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Now, I won't make you turn there, but I'm going to read two verses to you, and I want you to just put these together in your mind. Are you ready? So Revelation 13, 5 said this, And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So how long do the blasphemies occur? Forty and two months. Well, forty and two months is basically three and a half years. Now let's remember Daniel 7.25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. That's very similar to Revelation 13.5. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Now, here's the connection I want to make. When Revelation 13 talks about 42 months, it's obvious that that's three and a half years. You can see that. But what about these verses that talk about a time, times, and the dividing of time? Daniel 12, 7 said, time, times, and a half. Daniel 7.25 said, time, times, and the dividing of time. Revelation 12 said, time, times, and half a time. So think of it this way. If a time is one, and times is two, and a half is a half, what do you get when you add one plus two plus 0.5? Now, I'm tempted to play the Jeopardy music and give you 28 seconds to ponder this, but we got to move along, folks. I mean, life is short, right? So I'm going to help you with the math. 1 plus 2 plus 0.5 is 
three and a half. Wow, doesn't that line up perfectly? So there were a couple verses that told us about 42 months. Now we see three verses that talk about three and a half years. Those obviously line up. And in fact, the subject matter of those verses is very, very similar. Let me show you one thing further. Get Revelation 11. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So how much is that? One thousand two hundred threescore. What's threescore? Well, a score is 20. So what's threescore? 60. So a thousand two hundred and sixty is the duration in Revelation chapter 11. But compare that to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, and that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Now, if you recall in, in Revelation 12, in verse 14, just look and see it. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place. It's the very same concept. For a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So it's very clear that the three and a half years lines up with the 1,260 days. So think about this with me if you would. What happens if you take 1260, 1,260, and you divide it by 3.5? What do you get? Well, you get 360, roughly the number of days in a year. So what have we seen? We've seen that Scripture talks repeatedly about 42 months. We've seen that it talks about 12, uh, 1,260 days. And when it talks about time, times, and the dividing of time. All of those are talking about the same duration of time. Now, let's put this together. Get Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Now, many of you are familiar with what is called Daniel's 70th week. And Daniel's 70th week is a period of seven years that begins in the future when the man of sin signs a covenant with Israel. And that covenant lasts for a week. It lasts for seven years. Well, what's one half of seven? Again, no Jeopardy music. One half of seven is 3.5, or 42 months, or 1,260 days. Now, notice with me Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now, we won't take time to do this, but this will be obvious to you. Verse 15 is toward the middle of Matthew 24. In other words, there's a bunch of things that happen before it. There are a bunch of events that happen during the 70th week prior to the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation occurs in the middle of the 70th week. Now, notice what verse 15 and 16 say. Verse 15 when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, verse 16, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. It doesn't command them to flee during the first half of the 70th week. It commands them to flee once the abomination of desolation is set up. Now notice verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation. See, is the entire 70th week great tribulation? No, it's not. The Great Tribulation doesn't begin until after the abomination of desolation is set up. Look with me at Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Now, what's fascinating is we've just seen that the Bible definition of the Great Tribulation is that it is not the entire 70th week. Oftentimes people say that it is, but... Uh, that's, not, that's not what Matthew 24 says. The Great Tribulation doesn't begin 
until the abomination of desolation is actually set up. So look with me at verse 7, Revelation 12, 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And right before verse 7 was verse 6, and of course verse 14 we've already read, and those are the ones that talk about the three and a half years. So how does that fit together? Is Satan cast out of heaven at the beginning of the 70th week? No, because if he was, then the woman would flee into the wilderness for seven years, not three and a half years. He's cast out in the middle of the 70th week. And from that time, how much time is left? Well, there's 42 months. There's 1,260 days. There's time, times, and a half a time. So here's how this all fits together then. If Satan is cast out into the earth in the middle of the 70th week, and Revelation 12 says that he hath great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. In other words, does Satan understand the book of Revelation? He sure does. Does he understand the book of Daniel? Yes. Has he read them carefully? Has he studied them? There's no question he has. He knows that once he's cast out of heaven, the time is very short. And that's why he comes down to earth having great wrath. It's not a coincidence that the second part of the 70th week after the abomination of desolation is set up, is the great tribulation. That's because that's the point in time at which Satan is cast down to the earth and he has great wrath because he knoweth that the time is short. So let's wrap, let's conclude, you know, let's pull together what we've seen so far before we turn to the next point. So what we've seen is the 70th week is seven years. It's divided into two periods. There's the first half and the second half, the first three and a half years, in the second three and a half years. All these verses that we've looked at talk about the second half of the 70th week where the woman flees into the wilderness, where there's the great blasphemies spoken against God the Father, where the holy city is tread down by the Gentiles for 42 months. So let's take all that and now let's go to Daniel 12 and let's try to understand what's going on in Daniel chapter 12. So get Daniel 12 with me, and we're going to start in verse 4. So Daniel chapter 12, and let's look at verse 4. Daniel 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Fascinating verse. It indicates that many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So I take that to mean that, uh, you know, if you think of when Daniel is written, and it's talking about the future, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Well, what happens with mankind on the earth? Does mankind develop the ability to travel rather easily? He does. Does, does knowledge increase? It does. We live in the information age. We live in the time of big data. And what happens is the volume of information that is being produced keeps increasing at an, an, an exponential rate. There's more and more data. There's more and more knowledge. There is more and more knowledge, but there is not necessarily more and more wisdom. Because wisdom comes from the Word of God, and it doesn't matter how many terabytes of information and data you process, you're going to find wisdom in the Word of God. Now, what Daniel 12, 4 says is, is Daniel is instructed to seal the book. What does that mean? Look with me at verse 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? 
So Daniel's heard these things, but he doesn't fully understand them. Verse 9, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. What does that tell you about Daniel 12? Are you going to be able to understand all of it? You're not going to be able to. Now, even just think about this with me just for a minute. So as we look at the dispensational chart, let's do a little magic. So ready? Let's use our magic words. Abracadabra, a la peanut butter sandwiches. The mystery is gone. How did he do that? Slide of hand. It's amazing, right? Watch this. Now, there's an advanced magic class that I'll be teaching, but that's a different thing. But, for, but let me get back to my subject here, if I could. If we hide the dispensation of grace, and you're thinking about things the way Daniel did, what you would expect, did you, you would expect this timetable to play out, and you would expect some of these events here. But verse 9 just told you that the book was closed and it was sealed until the time of the end. So, Daniel wasn't going to be able to understand it. It will be people over here that understand it. Now, just so we're clear, Daniel didn't know anything about the dispensation of grace. This was a complete and total mystery to him. Now, if you think about, let's just read Daniel 12, 9 verse again. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Meaning that even if you think about the prophetic program, if you stand right here, you're not going to understand it. If you stand right here, you're not going to understand it. It's, it's only till you get over here in the end. So my personal opinion is that during the dispensation of grace, it's going to be very hard for us to understand everything that is revealed in Daniel because God closed the book. He sealed it until the time of the end. Isn't that amazing? What God has the ability to do is he has the ability to write things down. And even though they're written down, he can seal them so that they cannot be understood. So that, that should lead us to a little bit of humility about things, right? In other words, there's going to be some things in prophecy that we're not going to fully understand because they have been sealed until the time of the end. So with that caveat, with that you know, understanding that we may not be able to piece all of these things together, let's turn back to Daniel 12, verse 11 and verse 12. Daniel 12, 11. And from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. So let's pause there. When is the daily sacrifice taken away? Well, we do know something about that. Matthew 24, 15 tells us that the sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up. In other words, the, the, the sacrificial observances that Israel was performing in the temple, they're, they're put to a halt. They're ceased because the abomination of desolation is set up. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So there's something that takes place that lasts longer than the 1260. It lasts 1290. We're not told exactly what that is, but we know so far there's a, a period of time, and, and by the way, this all starts from the abomination of desolation. That's the starting point. We saw multiple things in the book of Revelation and Daniel about 1260 days. We just saw something about 1290 days, but it didn't tell us exactly what it is. Look at verse 12. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So now this is a new one, because this isn't 1260, this isn't 1290, this is 1335. So something happens at 1290, but something happens at 1335. Now I'm going to give you a suggestion as to what the 1335 might be. When you look at verse 12, notice what it says, Blessed is he that waiteth. So there's some waiting that's going on, and that waiting is going to be by the tribulation saints, obviously. Get with me Luke chapter 12. So let's say that you were looking at that verse and you were trying to research it. One of the logical things to do when it says, blessed is he that waiteth, well, you might as well run a search on wait. Let's find other times where people are waiting and see if it tells us anything so look at Luke 12, verse 36. 12, verse 36. 
and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, that they may open unto him immediately. So when the Lord is teaching during his earthly ministry, he uses the the comparison for the disciples of men that wait for what? Their Lord. When, When Jesus Christ is teaching them that, when he's teaching them about waiting for the Lord, what is he talking about? Well, you know that he's talking about the second coming. That's what they would have been looking for. Let me show you something similar. Get Mark 15. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15, verse 43. Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus Christ was already present. What was he waiting for? It seems to me what he's waiting for is when is the kingdom of God set up? The kingdom of God is set up when the king returns to set it up. So what he's waiting for there, I believe, is the second coming. Get Luke 23. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. And notice with me verse 51. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. So what you see is there's multiple verses that talk about people waiting for the kingdom of God. It seems to me that Uh, The 1335 that we saw in Daniel 12 is probably the timing of when the kingdom of God is formally set up. That's what seems to me to be the, the logical inference from what the verses say. Now let me show you something in Daniel 8. Daniel chapter 8. There's another time period, so when you're thinking about how do we reconcile all of these different days, there's another time period that you should be aware of. So Daniel chapter 8, Daniel chapter 8, verse 11. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Well, that's that sounds exactly like the abomination of desolation. Notice what he magnified himself, even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. So we're talking here about the abomination of desolation. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. This is false doctrine, obviously. Then I heard one saint speaking, And another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Now, we already saw earlier that the the court without was trodden under 42 months, 1260 days. But this is asking a slightly different question. Verse 14, And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and 300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So there's also a 2300-day period, and it seems to me what happens is, and it's from the timing of the abomination of desolation, once that's set up, there are 2300 days until the sanctuary is cleansed. So there's some way that the 1260, the 1290, the 1335, and the 2300 all fit together. It seems they're all starting at the same point of time, the abomination of desolation, and then they have different events that they lead up to. One of them appears to be the establishment of the kingdom of God. Another one appears to be the cleansing of the sanctuary. So hopefully that's helpful information to you as you ponder these issues. Let me do some more magic here. Bring back the dispensation of grace. We're talking, we've spoken a lot tonight about ages to come and talking about the prophetic program. 
But let's not lose sight of one thing. So when you think of ages to come, you think of the 70th week, you think of the Great Tribulation, you think of wrath and the mark of the beast and all those things. And let me just encourage you, the best advice about the 70th week I can give you is don't be there. And you can avoid it, right? All you have to do during the dispensation of grace is if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you trust the blood that he shed for your sins, you don't have to worry about the 70th week. You'll leave before it ever happens. And that is the wisest decision you could ever make. It's not your works. It's not your tithing. It's not your water baptism. It's not you turning over a new leaf. It's not keeping the Ten Commandments. You're saved by grace through faith in a moment, in an instant, when you believe the gospel. All you have to do is trust the blood that Jesus Christ shed for your sins. You're saved in that moment forever. How wonderful, how amazing, how powerful. Scripture says that now is the time of salvation. So please do resolve that issue for your own eternal blessing.